All right, first of all, thank you so much for being here, um, especially many of the maintainers and the members who have contributed to Spiffy and Cert Manager, uh, who have enabled us to be here and talk about securing edge workloads um, with Spiffy and Cert Manager. My name is Sitara Meyer, and I'm here with uh, Riaz, Riaz Mohammed. Hi, Al. Um, and we, our job, obviously, at, um, at Jetstack is to talk to many of our customers, and, and one of the things that we have heard many offer, very often is you know, the challenges around securing workloads, uh, especially as they are deployed across multiple different clusters, multiple different you know, domains. And, and as we sort of you know, started to think about the motivation for this um, session, we essentially wanted to look at it purely from a perspective of what does it take to provide a standard way of generating identities for workloads across clusters and essentially build trust. That's the simple motivation that we started to look at this from. Securing workloads, having an ability to generate an identity and distributing trust across multiple different trust domains. That was the purpose with which we started thinking about um, the challenge that needs to be addressed. And this actually started off purely from you know, many of the conversations that we have had with some of the customers, and specifically um, a customer that is in the financial space. And, and while this picture that you see here may look um, very simple, the challenge that, um, that the specific financial institution had um, is, is, is massive. And you know, we will demo demonstrate you know, with, with some of the edge devices that we have here, you know, how we have addressed that, how we have solved that, and what does it mean to, uh, to, uh, to address and secure uh, workloads. <laughs> So what you're seeing there on the picture is a bunch of terminals, obviously, and then a set of services that are core there. Uh, the simplest way to sort of you know, think about this is the bank here provides a set of services uh, that are consumed by different merchants. And, and as part of that, um, the merchant terminal that's out there, um, signs, um, generates some kind of a private key, uh, key pair, sends it across with chart, you know, obviously the bank validates it and sends a token back. I'm describing this in a very, very simple form. And over a period of time, this token is used to sort of you know, manage payments, refunds, and things like that. And this is the standard operating model in which various different merchants work, uh, payment terminals, um, core bank services. The challenge that, that, that really started to sort of you know, surface for this bank was when a, a merchant terminal was, or rather a merchant was offboarded, terminals were lost, Terminals were sort of, you know, uh, repurposed for other purposes. And that sort of, you know, uh, made a challenge for the bank, one, to figure out who is using the terminal. And it also started to uh, come into the notion of a fraud where a fake merchant or a fake, um, you know, uh, or somebody who has an account terminal would essentially use this terminal to process refunds. And, and that sort of, you know, um, obviously, as you can imagine, translates to or translated to um, millions of dollars of loss for this, this bank. And, and as we sort of think about this, you know, we said, what if, what if, what if every workload has a unique identity? And, you know, if you've been here, if you're here in this session, you're probably a little bit interested in understanding a little bit more about Spiffy, what it can do. Uh, if you're thinking about, you know, TLS and X5 and 9, you're probably using or are familiar with Cert Manager. So what we're trying to do is basically mapping this what ifs to various different scenarios under which you will essentially use Cert Manager, Spiffy, and a few other things that we're gonna talk about in the next uh, 10, 15 minutes. So what if this identity was used by the workload to say who it says it is? Um, and that is one of the things that, uh, that we wanted to, to ensure that happens. And then what if trust was automatically distributed when, uh, when a terminal is activated. So we talked about these terminals and the way they activate themselves with some kind of a bootstrapping process, talks to the bank services, and then it's all ready to go. Um, the way we were thinking about is there should be some sort of a trust model or a trust that can be established in a way where services on the backend know exactly what the terminals are and how they work. And the same way, how do you sort of you know, manage or rather figure out a way to sort of, you know, revoke that trust um, when a merchant is on board, off boarded. So these are essentially some of the what if challenges that we started to look at, you know, purely from the perspective of, you know, addressing um, 
providing an identity for every single workload, ensuring that you know, each of these workloads can talk to each other in a seamless, mutually authenticated way and all of those things. And, and obviously, as we started looking at it, we said, of course, Spiffy. Spiffy is the answer to many of the things, um, especially in this context. And, 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 and if, you have, if you have visited the Spiffy sort of, you know, the pavilion or, you know, if you've talked to anybody who is the maintainers of Spiffy, you know, um, if you have not, please do, uh, because they'll talk a lot about the things that can be, that are, um, that are, and that could be applicable to, to you, the work that you do within your organization. So, basically, from a perspective of Spiffy, you know, what is Spiffy? Secure identity for every workload, irrespective of where they're running. I mean, a very simple way of describing it. Uh, it basically allows you to authenticate mutually in an easy and reliable way. Um, very simple definition. Obviously, we want to get a little bit deeper on this to show how it works and what it means. But from the perspective of a definition, you should see that, you know, Spiffy essentially allows you to, one, attach some kind of an identity to a workload, and based on that, securely and mutually and reliably allow access to other workloads as you sort of, you know, talk to each other. So um, the last last bullet there obviously is, is something that's important. Spiffy just graduated within the CNCF, um, and um, which also means that if you go to the CNCF store there, you'll find a lot of jackets, t-shirts, socks. Feel free to buy them. You know, they're nice and looks good. The other project that I want to talk about, um, and before that, want to just tie in a little bit of the basics of Spiffy. You know, we hear Spiffy a lot, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you are curious, or many of you may know uh, what Spiffy does. But there are several characteristics of Spiffy that we need to understand before we sort of, you know, say, what does that secure identity look like? At the heart of, you know, anything that you do with Spiffy is a workload. I mean, we keep saying, you know, there is a workload that needs an identity, but what exactly is a workload? Workload is basically any software. You know, it could be your application, it could be a database, it could be a set of services that you run, it could be something that you run in a cluster, within a node, the pod, in a virtual machine, whatever that might be, any software that you sort of, you know, look at it from a perspective of functionally doing something is a workload, simply put. The second piece which is important to understand from a Spiffy perspective is uh, Spiffy ID. And this is something that you probably... Um, um, sort of, you know, heard quite a few times, oh, if you're using Spiffy, you need to generate a Spiffy ID. Uh, what does Spiffy ID even mean? Um, simply put, it's essentially just an URI, a URI that identifies a workload. And most often, um, and from the specification perspective, this URI is represented as Spiffy colon slash slash, a trust domain slash whatever workload that you want to uh, identify, some kind of an identifier. There is no real uh, way of saying, you know, this has to be in a certain way. The example that you see there represents some kind of a trust domain, uh, a workload that is in a certain namespace tied to a certain service account that owns that deployment. That's essentially representing a Spiffy ID for a certain workload that is deployed within your cluster. The third um, um, important aspect to understand within um, a Spiffy world is trust domain. Uh, trust domains essentially represent some sort of a security boundary a cluster, a namespace, a virtual machine, a physical server, whatever that might be, something that you can sort of, you know, draw a well-defined box essentially represents your trust domain. Spiffy s -width. This is, um, as I'm building this, you know, it's, it's to help understand that, you know, there are several other things that you need to consider. It's one thing to say that, you know, I have identified or I have an ID for Spiffy which is represented by... Uh, some kind of a URI. What you need to do next is to be able to make sure that you know this identifier can be attached with some kind of a cryptographically verifiable document, which is essentially an X Y nine certificate, and that's essentially what Spiffy S with is something that cryptographically helps you identify something that you have signed. Um, because you know, end of the day, when you say I have a workload that workload needs to be tied back to something that can be cryptographically verifiable. That's Spiffy S way. Then there is Spiffy workload, um, essentially something that um, allows you for the private key to be signed because there is also the signing process. Somebody has to sign your workload. Somebody has to look at what CA should I use for signing. There's all of those things that has to happen before that ID is generated. 
or rather those PPS would is generated. So that essentially is something that is happening uh, with, with something that referred to as a workload API. The last one, which is also important, is the notion of trust bundles. Uh, trust bundles essentially represents, from a X X5 and NS switch perspective, a collection of root CAs, right? So CAs, that's what yes. it is. <clears throat> yeah. so These are synced across namespaces in your cluster? Yeah, basically, um, any CAs that, that you want to attach against workloads, you, know, you could have a workload A running in cluster A, you could have a workload B running in cluster B, could be signed off of a completely different uh, CA root, something across with a completely different CA root. How do you sort of you know, manage the trust between those two clusters or two namespaces or two uh, trust boundaries, so to speak, right? So trust domains, rather. Um, so trust bundles is a way of making sure that you know, each of those workloads has, or at least have a way of being modeled to trust a certain chain of CAs that you are using within the workloads. That's basically what um, Spiffy uh, basics are. Basically, all of this in some way or the other map to things that you're doing, whether you're deploying your workload, whether you're deploying you know, uh, any other application. Uh, things to think about is from a perspective of uh, Spiffy is understanding what are these various elements that you deal with. Um, obviously, you know, we go from here to ensure that you know, everything can be absolutely automated these things are automatically generated, these things are automatically managed. That's essentially what we want to do. And from that perspective, the other project that I want to talk about is Cert Manager. Um, Cert Manager is something that many of you um, use, many of you are familiar, um, essentially something that allows you to automate, provision, manage TLS certificates at scale. Uh, people use it for their ingresses, people use it if, uh, to mount it to their pods, people use it in the context of anything that requires a TLS certificate that will allow you to securely provide access to your application, something that's very commonly used. Um, and there are several add-ons. You know, one of the things that we talk about very often is uh, only Cert Manager. Uh, Cert Manager has a lot of supporting add-ons. Um, I usually call them Cert Manager and Friends because these friends essentially allow you to build much more robust capabilities for your security infrastructure within Kubernetes. And, and, and we'll talk about some of those, um, some of those friends um, as we sort of you know, get through um, the, the rest of the presentation. Um, we are now in uh, incubating. Uh, so this was announced, obviously, you know, just uh, two or three weeks ago. Cert Manager is now um, an incubator uh, within the CNCF ecosystem. Um, we have a lot of maintainers um, actually here in uh, Detroit. Uh, so if you haven't visited the Cert Manager uh, booth at the Pavilion, please do, and we can talk a little bit more about you know what this or what Cert Manager does. Um, and in the top of the top of the title, you will see me adding a, a few of those pluses, and that's intentional because I'm actually building some additional add-ons, and, and I spoke about friends. These friends essentially will provide you the ability to sort of, you know, do uh, additional capabilities. So we talked about a Cert Manager. Cert Manager CSI driver Spiffy is essentially a, a, a CSI plugin, a driver plugin that allows you to basically make sure that you, know, you have an automated way of injecting spiffy S-Switch to your workloads that your workloads can use. Uh, a simple way of thinking about it is, you know, anytime you need an X509 certificate to be mounted in a part that is spiffy S-Switch, that is, then you just use spiffy drivers, um, uh, the CSI driver spiffy. All you do is in your deployment specification, you'll add some volume attributes and then automatically you will have um, a certificate injected into it. The second add-on that I'm gonna talk about is Trust. Trust Manager is a, is a project that is part of Cert Manager essentially to help distribute trust or distribute trust bundles, so to speak. So if you go back to the definitions that we draw for Spiffy, we talked about some of these things, you know, ability to distribute trust, ability to manage trust, and Trust Manager essentially is one of the projects that allows you to essentially distribute trust across your, um, across your uh, various different trust domains. The third one is, is also a most important um, sort of a, um, uh, add on, which we call uh, obviously the po approval policy. The, if you are familiar with 
Cert Manager. And if you have used Cert Manager, uh, one of the things you probably have seen is every time a certificate request resource is created, there are certain properties. There is an approved, denied, ready. And I would say 99% of you, if you have used Cert Manager, you probably saw that approved flag always true because the approver controller that is built into Cert Manager by default is true, which means every certificate request is automatically approved. Whether they are ready or not depends on your CA and the issuer configuration and all of that. But at the, at the basic um, configuration perspective, if you create a certificate request or so other as generate a certificate, that will automatically be approved. Um, however, from the perspective of Spiffy S8, there are certain things in the specification. So the list that you see there is actually from the Spiffy specification that every X509 S8 needs to have certain characteristics. And those characteristics are defined there. And what we provide as part of the CSI driver is an additional controller, a policy approver controller that, is allow, that ensures that every time an s is generated, it complies automatically to the specification defined by, these, uh, defined by Spiffy. So you don't have to write a policy, uh, you don't have to write your own or author policies. This is automatically built into the CSI driver uh, Spiffy uh, uh, plugin. So it ensures that every single certificate that's generated complies to those, those properties that you're defined there. So from the perspective of the solution, um, I just wanted to walk through, I mean, I spoke about you know, a bunch of things and I talked about you know, all of them in an individual way. Uh, if you sort of you know, look at it at a, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a view from where you have to think about how all of these work together, uh, what you really have is a bunch of different components. I had cert manager there, you see policy approver, you see the trust manager. Obviously, CSI driver uh, I'm representing down here primarily because it's a daemon set. Um, it, it is attached to, obviously, the node. And, and every time um, a part is scheduled to the node, basically CSI driver says, okay, so part is scheduled. There is certain specification defined in the, uh, in the specification of a deployment that says these are the volumes, these are the volume mounts. And I need to make a volume, I need to publish that volume, and as part of that deployment, I also need to mount the volume. Those are the specific things that sort of you know, happen. And, and as, soon as, that, uh, as soon as that process is over, the CSI driver plugin essentially initiates um, a request to cert manager with the CSR. That CSR contains a certificate with that specific properties that we just saw in the previous slide. Uh, it carries all of the information about your workload. It carries all of the information about the service account that's attached to it. Basically, just by, just by saying those few lines that you see there, volumes, where you want to mount the volume, and you know, what, that, um, what that volume itself looks like, the CSI driver's spiffy. Just those six lines or three lines, or I don't know how much, I can't count, uh, but a few lines that you have there uh, essentially enables you to make sure that you know, every part that you have has a spiffy as with automatically mounted on that volume mount. And from the perspective of you know, what really happened in this third step is you know, basically that CSR was generated. And once that happens, Cert Manager does the certificate reconciliation. It goes through the process of ensuring that you know, uh, that certificate is going to be fulfilled. Part of that, it also has to make sure that you know, uh, the trust and everything is, uh, is generated. It's rather, all of the trust bundle that was created is distributed back. Uh, I spoke about the policy. It ensures that you know, you're not creating some certificate by hand using the issuer that is tied to your spiffy because there is the notion of an issuer tied back to your organization CA, which could be backed by um, the security teams, managed HSM, or whatever that might be, right? Um, so after this, obviously, it's basically you know, just mounting, the, uh, mounting the, the certificates, basically the TLS cert, the private key, the CA cert, all of these things that needs to be available for the part, uh, specifically in that war run secrets, spiffy.io, you will have all of these things readily available there. Um, and then this, um, all, all, once these are all automatically mounted, so it's, it's available for, uh, for the spiffy, spiffy driver to, um, for the, rather the part to be, to use that application or use that uh, s word whenever it talks to other applications. So you can imagine that you know, if you have this one single deployment, replica of five, every single one of them has a, a uniquely cryptographically verifiable X509 s word mounted on the volume mount of that specific part because when 
those parts talk to other parts, or if you are talking to other things, every one of them have an identity, and your communication is uh, is built on the principle of mutual authentication, the mutual TLS. Uh, last step, obviously, you know, uh, just as we talked about, you know, you deploy. Of course, you undeploy or you delete parts, and you destroy um, destroy your duplicate because you're probably going through the cycle of deployment continuously. And when such a thing happens, obviously, you know, all of the certificate material that is associated with that workload is gone. You destroy it because um, one of the things that you may be familiar with, you know, when you create a certificate resource using Cert Manager, there is a TLS secret that is automatically created. Um, with the case of Spiffy Driver, there is no TLS secret because all of the material that is required for that part is actually injected into the volume mount. Uh, and that when that part is deleted, it goes away. So there is no, um, you know, TLS secrets to manage, TLS ticket to track off, you know, TLS tickets to R back on, and also from a security standpoint, you know, some of the some of the larger financial institutions have uh, have 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 uh, at least guidelines around not creating any TLS secrets, especially that that has private keys and things like that in their uh, in the material. So this sort of you know addresses that 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 notion of uh, an identity that is issued to a workload when it needs it, where it needs it, so that the other workloads, when they are in communication, they are all mutually talking to each other. That's the so sort of a sort of the high-level view of you know how all of these things work. Um, obviously, there is Spiffy involved here. There is the Cert Manager involved here. Cert Manager CSI Spiffy driver is involved here. Trust Manager is involved. Policy of is involved. Lots of different projects, all sort of you know coming together to provide this ability to to help sure that you know you are securing your workloads irrespective of where they are running. So so the idea is that you know you're not just using one single component. You're using a combination of things to help satisfy that security uh, aspects of you know how you secure workloads. So I want to now hand it off to uh, to Riaz to to talk a little bit about the demo architecture. So he's got Raspberry Pis here. He's got all sorts of things. Uh, to just sort of you know walk through um, walk through the architecture of the demo itself, make it a little bit real, uh, and then also come back and and send, sort of wrap it up. All right, thanks, okay. Sitaram. Yeah. So for our demo architecture, we have a cluster that's running on K3s. It's a, a two-node cluster that's running on Raspberry Pi, and then uh, this is where all your client workloads are going to be, or your edge workloads are going to be running. And now we have another cluster, which is a six-node GKE cluster that's running uh, in the cloud. Uh, we ha uh, so what you see here in the middle are all components that Sitaram already talked about, Cert Manager, Spiffy Driver, Policy Approver, uh, Trust. And these are all installed in both the Edge as well as uh, the GKE cluster. So what really happens, right? So let's... Uh, let's look at a server-side component or a server-side microservice that is deployed on the GKE cluster. Uh, the CSI Spiffy driver sends a CSR, uh, Cert Manager receives it, and it creates a certificate request. Now, there's a certificate request policy that is bundled into the policy approver. The policy approver and approves the policy Cert Manager, a cert, a cert Manager mints a X509 SVID and then mounts it onto the volume of the workload. Now this happens in both the server as well as the client. So each one have their own machine identity now. Now what about trust? How do they talk, talk to each other, right? So that's where the trust bundle comes in. The trust bundle, so the trust bundle is distributed across both the clusters, which have the CAs. So if you look at next slide, you would see that the client CA as well as the server CA is within the trust bundle that is distributed uh, in the GKE cluster. So this basically creates trust. Now once uh, you want to revoke trust, what you do is you remove the CA from the trust bundle in your server, server application, uh, sorry, in your server cluster. This basically revokes the trust between the two workloads. So it's like pretty simple. You're not going across doing east-west traffic and you, you, 
your both revoking trust as well as yeah, your enabling trust. Sorry. Now that we have this, I'll go through a demo of what we have. So I have, uh, yeah. so I've deployed, uh, uh, I've already installed uh, Cert Manager as well as uh, the trust one on, yeah, using Helm on my GKE cluster. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an intermediate certificate. Now in, you, you would be creating, uh, we, we are creating this certificate just for, demos, uh, for demo purposes, but then you would be using your PKI infrastructure to issue this certificate and Cert Manager would do that for you, right? Now this creates a certificate with a certificate contents as well as an issuer that is used to serve the trust domain. So let's do that. Yeah. You see a issuer there. So now what I'm doing is I'm creating the CA certs uh, as a secret and then also creating the trust bundle that references both the client and CA. Now this trust bundle, if you see, would be distributed across all the namespaces. So there's, there's a set of config maps that are generated that are synced across namespaces here. And when I see the contents of uh, the trust bundle, I would see both the certificate of the CA, the CA certificate for the client as well as the server. Now I'm going to uh, deploy the CSI spiffy driver. And this, as Sitaram already talked about, it's a daemon set. So this may take some time because, okay. But we'll have to have the approval running before we go next. So the CSI spiffy driver is running on my cluster now, along with the policy approver. Now I'm going to create my application, right? So deploying my uh, edge server application. Okay. And now uh, what, we'll, what we'll do is let's look at uh, what's the SWID, uh, what's the spiffy ID of this app that's been, yeah. So if you see here, there's an S with that has been generated and an X, sorry, an X, X509 S with that's been generated and there's a spiffy ID that's attached to it. Now let's go to the client, which is my Raspberry Pi. And I'm going to be switching to that context. And here I've installed all the, uh, the cert manager, the trust, uh, the trust project, the CSI spiffy driver and all of that. So that's what you see here. And let me go in and see my CAs. Again, I created my trust already. Uh, this has all my trust bundles that are synced across my workspaces. And here, if you see, it has both uh, the CA and the server. Now, I'll deploy my client application. See if it started. This takes a while to start. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to be testing out my MTLS right, between my client and my server. So I have two uh, methods here that I'm going to call. Oops. Oh, I'll have to. I'm going to do a port forward now so that I can access this. So what you see here is uh, the, client, uh, the client application that's running on my Raspberry Pi is talking to my, uh, to my uh, server application that's running on uh, the GKE cluster. And this is, there's a handshake um, 
there's an MTLS handshake that's happening, and we're getting an uh, edge activated uh, message here. You can also, I have another one called edge pay. And it says payment successful. This is what you would see uh, you know, in a terminal when you activate and start using the payment method, uh, when you start uh, doing payments, right? Now what we're going to do is we're going to update the trust bundle and then revoke the trust. Now, once we do that, we should, you know, uh, any, uh, any handshake between the client application and the service application should not happen. So here what I'm doing is basically uh, updating my trust bundle. And what you could see here is now I have just one CA. So I'm revo removing the trust uh, for uh, my client. So uh, these are the log, logs from the server. So we did two activations, and then we, uh, we created a payment successful. Uh, we also invoked a payment, and it said payment successful. Uh, so let's see. Okay. Let's go back to the... So now, uh, if you look at it, when I try to call my HP, or my edge activate, I get a message saying that device un unauthorized. So it's as simple as just updating your trust bundle and unauthorizing your client altogether. Oh, I didn't even check my logs. No logs here, so let me check the logs on this. Yeah. Next slide. Official presentation. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, Riaz. Hopefully, um, that gives some context to you know um, how all of this work. I mean, that those two pictures are definitely not ours. Um, I have somebody else's pictures, as you can imagine. <laughs> so. Um, I, I wanted to give a shout out to you know a couple of our colleagues you know who've been working on this um, for a long time, um, especially um, Josh, who is also here. If you want to spend time talking to him about several other add-ons for Cert Manager, uh, he's the one who built Spiffy, part of JetStack. Uh, there is also a much more detailed blog about you know how to manage workload identities um, across multiple different cloud providers. Uh, feel free to reach out to that uh, thing as well. Uh, and most importantly, one of the things that we've spent time um, in the last I mean, obviously, a few months and, you know, at least a, a couple of years or so, um, really leading, reading, um, solving the bottom turtle. So if you haven't read this book, um, I strongly recommend you going through this because this essentially talks about a lot of different things that we just covered, but also in a much more detail, uh, also going beyond Spiffy into the world of Spire and what does attestors mean, how do you sort of, you know, use specific technology, specific attestors and things of that sort. Uh, so that, that, that will tell you, you know, the next set of, you know, things that you can and can absolutely do. Um, I want to also so make sure that, you know, if you, if you are somebody who uses Cert Manager, um, obviously you, we talk about, you know, TLS as digital identities. Um, if you want a, you know, wax seal printed physical certificate that we want to carry with you, uh, come see us. So we are actually uh, minting certificate by hand <laughs> with a wax seal and you know, we'll give one to you um, that you can take as a souvenir. Um, so, so visit us at our booth, um, so that'll give you something that to, to, to take forward as well. Uh, so, so where do we leave from here? So, I mean, obviously, you know, um, we, we showed some of the things that's possible. There's also a lot of things that we can work on. Um, some of the things that we identified that, that absolutely needs to be done is a model-driven way. So today we saw that, you know, there were some things that we were doing, obviously managing trust in a, in a way where you are, where you're creating this resource called bundle and managing it. So we want to be able to model that why are rules and things like that? You know, something that we've been thinking about. Um, obviously, you know, uh, trust distribution across trust boundaries is also something that that we want to look at in an automated way. Today, you know, there is you have to, you can manage it, but you know, you can uh, you can literally have to you have to figure out you know how to how to distribute trust across multiple different things. Uh, but then again, you know, we also look at you know what does it mean to have control plane uh, that we've been working on um, to essentially manage trust across. Uh, different security boundaries and how you manage it, how do you look at it. 
Uh, that's where we are. Um, obviously, you know, there is a QR code to, um, to sort of you know, provide your feedback. We appreciate any feedback that you might have. Um, talk about it. And we can take questions if you have. Yes, somebody there. Um, how does this, uh, how does the, the cert manager model for uh, this process that you've laid out here, how does this interact with um, doing MTLS through a service mesh, which is another approach that I've seen to doing this? Is this, um, is this, you know, is this something that, it, that plays with that or is this kind of in place of doing that through, through a service mesh? How does, how does that interact? Absolutely. Uh, so we do uh, have integrations with service mesh. So there are uh, different service meshes um, that sort of, you know, like for example, if you're using Istio, there is an add-on that specifically uh, is called Istio CSR that essentially uh, mounts Cert Manager as a way to provide that workload signing certificates into Istioid. So that way, any of the any of the workloads that is part of your mesh will essentially be delegated to be signed by the signing certificate that is managed by Cert Manager. So that's what Istio CSR does. It is an add-on that you would install um, in your in your cluster wherever your service mesh is. Uh, but as you sort of you know manage your service mesh, you would essentially not use the default built-in CA server or the mechanism through which the CA is used. Uh, but the but the the mechanics of cert manager essentially enables you to plug your organization CA into the signing process, uh, so that it is possible. Um, so, so obviously CSI driver and CSI SPF is used more in the context of non-mesh workloads, but for mesh workloads, there is absolutely that mechanism available. Um, yeah. So, there's another question there. Hi, great presentation. So my question is, how does it work with like multi-cluster or like virtual cluster? Does it like, have you guys tested those cases? Yeah, so in this case, this was a multi-cluster um, model. So we actually used two different clusters. Actually, we had like uh, two different clusters, one on Google Cloud and one was running uh, Raspberry Pi. One is running Pi. right here. Yeah, so um, the idea is that you know the trust domains are across clusters, and and we want to be able to distribute and manage trust across trust boundaries. Uh, today, that management of trust across that is via a trust bundle that you distribute um, with the, with the CAs that you manage, um, and that essentially connects um, the the trust stores or the trust CAs or the CAs that you are managing across multiple different clusters to communicate with each other. So in this example, we were using a multi-cluster model to distribute trust. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll be here. Uh, I'm happy to chat, take any more questions. Yep. Excellent. Thank you so much.